Imagine being the ultimate boss, living in a luxurious mansion high up in the Malibu Hills. I'm talking ocean views, gorgeous sunsets, and beachfront access. A beach has your backyard. Just think of the incredible backyard science videos you could create. Okay, okay, we can't all have a beachfront crib like Lil Wayne, Pharrell, or even Robert Downey Jr. But we can still explore one of the most beautiful and unique ecosystems that the ocean provides. An ecosystem that is home to incredible biodiversity. An ecosystem known as tide pools. With the moon being so far away, we don't often think of it as having an effect on our media environment. Tide pools, however, are unique because they're directly connected to the large rock orbiting high above. The moon exhibits a strong gravitational pull on the Earth as it orbits around us. As we rotate, this constant pull and release creates the phenomenon we know of as tides. High tides and low tides vary, with some changing a few feet or dramatically more. They occur twice a day and can differ depending on the phases of the moon and the time of the year. Think of a tide as the mood swing of Kanye West. George Bush doesn't care about black people. I love this yeah. guy right here. This constant back and forth of the tides helps shape the ecosystem we know of as tide pools by exposing habitats that are normally completely covered by water. By using a tide chart, we can determine at what time of the day the tide will be the lowest. The location where the ocean meets the land is known as the intertidal zone, and this zone is where we're able to observe a wide variety of organisms. Two common organisms you can find at tide pools are barnacles and mollusks, and although they may look pretty simple and lifeless, these organisms are very much alive and pretty complex. Barnacles are crustaceans, very similar to lobsters and crabs, whereas mussels are mollusks, more similar to oysters and clams. They're both filter feeders, with barnacles using specialized limbs to sift plankton through the water, and mussels sifting the same plankton through their shells. Since they both live in this intertidal zone, where waves are crashing back and forth, they've each developed interesting methods of staying secure to the rocks. Barnacles secrete a cement-like glue substance that's one of the most powerful natural glues in the world. This keeps them firmly attached with an adhesive strength of 22 to 60 pounds per square inch. Mussels use a thread-like fiber that keeps them loosely attached to the rock, giving them the flexibility to drift and absorb nutrients in the water. Pretty advanced features for an organism that seems so basic. The high amount of nutrients from the constant movement back and forth of water in the intertidal zones means lots of available food for organisms. But the name of one in particular is not as sweet as it may seem. I take you to the candy shop. This sponge-like structure right here is a starburst anemone. Sea anemones are invertebrates and use a muscular tube-like trunk to move around and attach themselves to different surfaces. They're equipped with a ring of tentacles and a mouth at the center. These tentacles have stinging cells that they use to capture prey, and in the case of the starburst anemone, are also used to ward off other anemones in their territory. How dope is this? You guys remember from a previous Backyard Science video, we talked about mollusks, more specifically, snails and slugs. Here, we have a giant sea slug. This guy is literally the size of my hand. So crazy. Another dope animal species that's easy to find in tide pools is one that we're all likely familiar with. Hermit crab is unique because of their ability to inhabit the shells of other organisms, primarily that of snails. As they molt and increase in size, they're on a constant quest for a new and larger shell to call home. Their fifth and sixth pair of legs are incredibly small, and instead of being used for walking, are used to securely attach themselves to the inside walls of their shell. These shells are their source of protection and shelter, and are carried with them literally everywhere they go, giving a whole new meaning to clinging.
there's also another type of crab that exists in these tide pools. Rock crabs are incredibly crucial to a tide pool ecosystem. They act as the garbage men of the environment, eating everything from plankton and algae to decaying plant matter. Climate change and global warming have dramatic effects on tide pool ecosystems. The acidification of ocean water from excess carbon dioxide in the air directly impacts organisms like coral reefs, clams, mussels, and snails by making it difficult to produce the calcium carbonate ions that make up their outer bodies and shells. Another direct reminder of just how fragile our environment truly is. Tide pools, however, can be a place of incredible wildlife discoveries. Their ability to change and shift due to the orbiting moon means that each low tide can reveal a whole new host of species. And with 70% of the earth being covered by water, the likelihood of having a tide pool ecosystem in your own backyard is actually pretty high. I'm the Hip Hop MD. This is Hip Hop Science. Until we meet on our next adventure, stay curious. <laughs>